what's going on? Tonight is my last night off work until I have to go back Friday. So I figured I would uh, try and get one more of these videos at least filmed. Um, I might try and edit it tonight as well because I, I find myself pretty bored. Um, you know, these shifts where Kaylee's gone all day and I'm here. All right, let's get into it. We are mostly going to stick uh, onto like the death metal end of things today. Um, but we have a bunch of different types of death metal that I'm going to talk about just to keep it interesting. So the first thing uh, that I'm going to talk about here is something that is fucking nuts. And this is actually a 10 inch. I'm not really sure that I have any other like death metal 10 inch records. Uh, but it's also kind of a stretch to call this just death metal. Um, this band labels themselves as like experimental brutal death metal. And I think that that's a, a good way to um, sort of summarize this because uh, I mean, just if you take one look at it, you probably have an idea of sort of what it sounds like. But we'll talk about it. This is meticulous butchery with induced serotonergic disfoliation. So again, kind of a, a, a typical band name and album title uh, for like the sort of brutal death metal type stuff. But this is great. Like it's super weird. Lots of uh, really strange like time changes in the drums and really the like the drum performance on this thing is just fucking deranged. Like it's it's a very intense drum performance. Um, and they have that kind of typical sort of like kind of brutal death metal tingy sound. Lots of like uh, pinched harmonics and stuff on this one as well. But what's so cool about this is like, there are moments on here, specifically on the second song, which is the title track, uh, which is the one I'd recommend you listen to because it's got the most sort of diversity in it. But uh, it, it's like, there are moments that are almost like jazzy synth moments. Very strange, like super duper weird for this style of like brutal death metal. Uh, but it's so fucking cool. There's moments where it kind of breaks and it's just like the sound of like the, the drums with like rushing water. It sounds like water, probably supposed to be blood. But this thing is just absurd from front to back. The vocals are very like bullfrog, toilet bowl vocals, uh, which I fucking love. But yeah, man, no complaints here. I, uh, I love stuff like this. And though it is absurd, it's definitely worth a shot. Um, even if you don't normally like stuff like this, maybe it'll uh, maybe it'll do something for you. Uh, but if it doesn't, I you know I understand. So there's the album cover. There, uh, it's just a picture of like guts, and then a photo of somebody's face peeled back with their skull cut open. Love that for them. There's the back cover right there. Uh, more of just kind of what's on the front behind the logo and the image there. Uh, three tracks on this one, all on one side. Um, this is put out through Night Rhythms, and uh, it is limited. 150 copies. I have number 96. So this folds open, and actually the way that it... Uh, like is kind of described as like this can be folded over for like an alternate album cover but it's basically the same thing with just different colors uh and this side here just has yeah uh the i guess this is a one-man project so the vinyl itself is actually um not pressed vinyl it's like lathe cut uh which is cool i don't have any uh, i don't think i have any other lathe cut records um this one sounds good. It sounds maybe a little bit thin, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's like normal for lathe records to sound a bit different than pressed vinyl. I'm sure it probably is, but I'm not really the audiophile type. Uh, the back of the record is like screen printed because it says just single sided. But yeah, man, um, I've been really into this one the past uh, week or so. Played it a bunch of times, I really like it. Oh, uh, one, one complaint I have about this is the cover is not actually big enough um, to like, you know, go around the entirety of like the inner sleeve. So that's cool. So I really like this one and hopefully somebody here ends up liking it as well. So that's Meticulous Butchery Induced Serotonergic Dispoliation. Alright, 
Uh, moving on to a death metal record that a lot more people will know, um, but also probably one that I don't have to spend too much time talking about. I just kind of want to brag that I own this. This is Death with Leprosy. Uh, this is a 1988 under one flag pressing. So it is the first press, the European first press. Um, obviously this was also pressed on Combat Records, which was the first American press. Uh, and that one was actually a gatefold cover, but um, from what uh, from what I saw, the gatefold is kind of weird because like the, I don't even know how to describe it, like the sleeve opens up from the inside. So you have to open the, the gatefold all the way to pull the record out. Um, don't think I have any records like that. Actually, I think a couple of the uh, Black Dahlia Murder records are like that, like the triple gatefolds, like Everblack and Abysmal, I think. Anyway, um, I mean, this is like, this is legitimately one of my favorite death metal records ever. Uh, death obviously um, changed their style big time from the beginning to the end, but a lot of bands do that. Uh, death, however, like every record was a bit different than the record before it. Uh, and I think this was kind of a, a perfect sort of bridge between like the, the kind of raw, frenetic sound of uh, Scream Bloody Gore and the kind of more scaled back, almost progressive stuff that this band did later. Uh, I think this record is just like, the, the sound here is perfect for me. Uh, I, I Pretty much every song on this one has a good riff in it. Uh, my favorite for sure is Forgotten Past. That might not be my favorite song on this album. Um, however, like the, the part in that song, like the guitar solo in that song that uh, kind of just ends and then that first riff kicks in again, it's fucking obviously like Pull the Plug is probably the most sort of iconic song on this one and that might be my favorite as well. I mean, I don't know dude, the title track, Leprosy, Born Dead, choke on it, left to die. Fucking, it's just, it's so goddamn good. I love this record. Um, this record is also known for having like a standout sort of drum sound and performance. Uh, but I, I fucking love this album. I don't really have to talk about the music because everybody owns this thing. Everybody owns some copy of Leprosy for sure. Uh, but yeah, this one's actually in pretty good condition. Of course, it's got the normal like ring wear and stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. There's a back cover there, a uh, shot of all the guys. Like I said, this is an under one flag pressing of this one. This also includes the inner sleeve, the original inner sleeve, which is cool. It's got all the lyrics and the death logo in the back there. And the other side is, again, a shot of each of the guys playing live. And there's the vinyl itself. Uh, of course, your classic under one flag label there. I love it, man. So right when I knew I wanted to, you know, collect some first presses of some of my favorite albums, uh, I, Death's Leprosy might have been the first one that I thought about. Um, and I'm so pleased to own this. And like I said, I don't need to talk about the music, but I just wanted to flex a bit because this is like, uh, this is such a cool piece in my collection. Um, even though you know it, play it again. That's Death with Leprosy. Alright, moving on. Um, this is a couple of newer bands, but uh, these are kind of two standout bands in the current sort of like uh, death grind realm, I guess. Uh, and both of these bands have been uh, uniquely busy over the last few years with just release after release. And this is a split between Pharmacist and Fluids called Feelin' Young. Um, I really, really like both of these bands here, especially lately. I've been, on a, I've been on a real big death metal kick lately, which is kind of why this video is happening. Uh, but, you know, especially Pharmacist. Like, man, I, I liked Pharmacist, you know, up until recently, but, um, you know, I've, I've had a couple Pharmacist records for at least a year now. Um, maybe it may be more, but um, I don't know lately. It's just really been scratching an itch for me and uh, Fluids of course is just wonderful uh, Fluids is a lot I guess if like you were to compare both of these bands to either like to any one project um, Like pharmacist is, is definitely closer to like carcass whereas fluids is a lot more like mortician um, And I don't think anybody's got any complaints with anything that I just said um, 
Uh, this split is fucking great though. I think I probably prefer the pharmacist side on this. Um, and if you haven't heard me talk about pharmacist before, uh, it, like I said, it, it is kind of like early, early-ish carcass. Like, the, I mean, really the pharmacist stuff can kind of sound like anywhere between like the first four carcass albums. Uh, but, um, the material on this probably sounds somewhere like the, like necroticism era of Carcass. I love how the second track on the pharmacist side is kind of a, uh, it's an instrumental and it's actually a pretty short song, which is something that uh, Pharmacist does a little bit differently than a lot of death grind bands. Is like, Pharmacist songs are, are quite a bit longer than is typical for like songs in that genre. Um, but the second track on the pharmacist side is called Numbing Phase and it transitions perfectly, like seamlessly into the third track, Sanguine Intaglio. Ooh, in Sanguine Intaglio. Um, it transitions into that track perfectly with like this super groovy riff. Ah, I fucking love it. And of course the vocals on the pharmacist side are pretty like inhuman sounding as well, which I love. Um, the fluid side, like I said, it's, uh, it's it kind of more like on the mortician end of like death grind. Uh, but what's quite a bit, what's different about this split that I noticed is, uh, Fluids usually uses a lot of, uh, like clips, like sound clips from, um, like real murder videos or suicide videos or whatever. Uh, the ones on this kind of are, are a bit sillier in nature. Um, not really sure why, but I like it. Um, and the fluid stuff, uh, the, the drums are pretty obviously like programmed drums. Um, not everybody's into that. I don't really mind personally, uh, but really fluids, the difference, I think the biggest difference between fluids and pharmacist here is like fluids, uh, really like kind of clogs the atmosphere. Like the, the, the music feels a lot more claustrophobic. Um, and you know, pharmacists, there's, there's more room for like the riffs to breathe. Uh, the fluid stuff can also uh, get groovy, just like the stuff on the pharmacist side. So this is a really good pairing for a split. Uh, the album cover, <laughs> it's um, absurd, obviously. Just kind of like a collage of, uh, I don't know, people who currently do, and in this guy's case, used to do heroin. I also remember uh, like this picture here, like the the crocodile uh, picture. Like if you, if you search like crocodile on YouTube, that's what will come up. Um, yeah, fucking absurd. There's the back of it right there, both band logos. Uh, put out through Grindfather and Left Hand Patches. Uh, this does include an inner sheet, which has just, you know, individual credits, no lyrics or anything on either side. Just credits for each individual band. Um, and you could get this on black vinyl or uh, the colored variant, which is what I have here. And I believe this was limited to 300 copies. Just orange with black and white splatter. Very, very nice. So yeah, man, uh, if you like your death metal fucking nasty, if you like your death metal kind of uh, inspired by some genre classics, then uh, you probably already know both of these bands, but if not, this is definitely worth a whirl. Both sides of this are fucking great, so uh, give it a shot. It's Pharmacist and Fluids with Feeling Young. All right, moving on. This is a uh, kind of a staple for for my like early venture into death metal, uh, especially brutal death metal, but really like this band was one of the earliest for me. Um, and I actually think the, uh, like the first death metal shirt I ever owned was a shirt from this band. This is Aborted with Gormageddon, the saw and the carnage done. So Aborted's been around for a, a long time. I mean, they formed back in like 1995, uh, which, you know, Aborted is definitely still going strong. I'm not really the biggest fan of like their current stuff. Uh, most of it I don't even hear for a couple years, you know, after it's released. Um, and it's been that way for the past like eight years or so, because I think the last record that I bought was the Necrotic Manifesto, which was 2014. Um, and it's uh, actually, I bought the uh, CD for Retro Gore, whatever year that was. 
Um, and you know, it's it's good stuff, but like it it definitely feels a little bit more like trite than uh, these earlier records do. Uh, and this is one of the better ones, I think. Uh, so this is the third album from 2003. Um, and this is actually the first repress of this one, uh, which was, you know, long overdue, it would seem. Uh, out on Listenable Records, which is who did the first press of this one as well. So, you know, they, they took their sweet time for no fucking reason. Uh, but this is fucking great, man. There's a lot of, like, depth to this, to this album. Though it is brutal death metal, Aborted has a way of feeling just completely unique to anything else. Uh, like... Especially, obviously, especially the vocals. Sven, the vocalist of Aborted, it's been the same vocalist since the very beginning. Uh, his vocals, literally nobody else sounds quite like that. And, uh, I mean, you know, you could, I could walk into a room to a, a song that's I've never heard before, and I would immediately be able to tell you that that's Sven from Aborted. And that is a huge, huge compliment, because especially in, like, the death, the brutal death metal realm, like, you know, the the super deep, like, Cookie Monster toilet bowl vocals are like a dime a dozen. So, uh, for somebody to sound completely unlike anybody else, uh, it's, you know, high praise. Um, but this album is fucking great. The first track on this, uh, Meticulous Invagination, uh, there's a couple minutes into that song, there's like a, a breakdown. Uh, and it's so fucking cool with like the pinched harmonics and uh, Sven's vocals obviously just kind of elevate everything. Uh, and really all over this thing there are plenty of like slower, groovy moments uh, with uh, lots of guitar solos on this thing as well which is really cool. Uh, the lyrics feel kind of like carcass influenced, a lot of like medical terminology and stuff which there's a lot of that kind of thing uh, happening even to this very day. Um, but, you know, I like it because it's kind of unique to a genre, you know? Uh, and there's actually a, uh, the very last track on this is a Carnal Forge. Uh, it's a carcass cover, the, the song from Heartwork. And, um, it's a, it's a good cover, but it's actually, they, they kind of changed it a bit. Like, it's not a perfect copy. Uh, they, they basically, like, did their own guitar solos, so, which is different from the original. Uh, which is, is cool. I like that. Uh, anyway... Uh, this is probably my favorite of the aborted full-length album covers. Um, I, I prefer uh, I prefer Coronary Reconstruction to this, but that's an EP. So if we're just talking full-length albums, this is the best of the covers for sure. I love it. There's the back cover there. I know that this repress is also not a perfect copy of the first press. Uh, the I don't know for sure if the back is different but I know that this lyric sheet is. So, uh, there's all your lyrics on one side there and a kind of weird skull, human skull, animal skull hybrid, maybe. So I don't know that uh, there were any like limitations specified or anything and I don't know if there were multiple versions of this. Um, I just got what I basically had in front of me. Uh, translucent red, very nice. So yeah, uh, Aborted kind of needs no introduction, obviously. Like, if you know Brutal Death Metal, you're well aware of Aborted. And uh, in terms of the full-length albums, this might not be my favorite of the full-length albums. I think I probably prefer the Archaic Abattoir, uh, which came after this one. But really, like, the first handful of aborted records, honestly, the first bunch of aborted records, like, all the way up to Global Flatline, I could say, are, like, great records. Though, you know, with aborted, like, within that time frame, you could probably start anywhere. Uh, but as for today, I am recommending Gormageddon, The Saw, and The Carnage Done. Moving on, uh, this is another early death metal album. Um, well, you know, relatively early. I think this album came out in like 1992 or something. This is Disastrous Murmur with Rhapsodies in Red. Uh, first of all, Disastrous Murmur may be one of like the coolest death metal names ever. Uh, and also this cover is fucking sweet too. Like these alien zombie things, very cool. 
so yeah, man, Disastrous Murmur. This band is an Austrian band. Uh, formed back in like 1988, so it was pretty early for death metal. So I, I couldn't tell you the names off the top of my head, but I know there was a couple demos that came out before Rhapsodies in Red, because this is the first uh, Disastrous Murmur full-length album. And uh, I think this band is still around. Not certain about that, uh, but I know that they did more records after this, but none of them really have the, the kind of acclaim that this first one does. Uh, and this is a great fucking record. Like, right off the bat, actually, um, when I when I first, if you put this record on, like, the very first track, Disgorged Bowel Movement, um, right off the bat, it kind of sounds like something Cannibal Corpse would have done around the same time. Uh, but Disastrous Murmur has a lot of little intricacies that, like, Cannibal Corpse would never do. Like, there are keys on this album. And they're used kind of sparingly, but, um, you know, and not always. Like, there's a track on here, fuck. Is it Into the Dungeon, maybe? That starts with, like, a, just like a, like a little synth intro. And, you know, Cannibal Corpse would have never done anything like that. But there are parts on here, musically, that sound kind of like that, to give you an idea. Uh, the bass on here is very audible, which is cool. The vocals are super, like, throaty and raspy. Uh, you know, again, it's not, you know, that's, that's not unheard of. But it's also not really a dime a dozen either. Uh, I dig it. Um, this is a 2022 Osmos Press. So this is, uh... This is pretty much brand new. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, that album cover is fucking sweet. There's the back cover there. Uh, just all of the track listing and a shot of the band. This comes with an inner sleeve. Individual shots of the guys and the big band logo. And all the track listing on the other side. So uh, this record, I remember it was like limited to, to something weird. It wasn't like a round number. It was like 490 something copies. Uh, and it is on this green, like swampy green vinyl, uh, which isn't coming through perfectly on here, but I promise you, hey, it's green. So yeah, man, um, definitely not um, uh, a secret or anything. Disastrous Murmur is probably pretty well known, uh, but you know, I, I just recently um, picked up the first Disastrous Murmur record in my collection, so, uh, you know, not that I'd not heard it before or anything like that, it was just kind of, uh, never really readily available as far as I can remember, though Osmos is pretty good at keeping things in press, so, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, if you haven't heard this, give it a whirl, that's Disastrous Murmur with Rhapsodies in Red. <laughs> What we're listening to in the background today is uh, one of several things that I was sent by a uh, very kind person who has been watching these videos for a long time. He messaged me on Instagram a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, and uh, just asked if he could recommend me something, and he did. And uh, what he sent was really cool. And he asked if he could uh, send me some stuff. And I said, sure. His name is River, by the way. Um, I, I hopefully, I'm sure he'll be watching this. Um, I'll probably send him this video because I'm gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna talk about both the records that he sent me, but I'll also show the CDs as well. Uh, what we're listening to right now is this. This is a 2022 album from Organectomy. Uh, this is called Nail Below Nail. Uh, really, really cool. This is uh, this is kind of the odd one out of the the stuff that he sent me because this is um, this is more like brutal death metal, slam metal kind of stuff. Uh, the other stuff that he sent is is more kind of death corey. Uh, but he also sent this. Oh shit! He also sent this. Uh, this is the new album from And Hell Followed With, uh, called Quietus. So, uh, And Hell Followed With is a band that I, I liked some of what I heard quite a while ago, probably a decade or more. Um, and for some reason I, I kind of just, like, fell off. 
uh, keeping up with their stuff. Maybe it just kind of happened around the time that I fell off most deathcore stuff. Uh, you know, there was always a couple bands that I kept up with, like, I mean, like Carnifex, but, like, uh, really, you know, my, my taste of, uh, of deathcore is, is very stuck in, like, the late 2000s, so, um, you know, like, really anywhere from, like, 2007 to, like, 2011, like, in there is where my sort of knowledge of deathcore kind of lives and dies and uh i'm it's really cool that he sent this stuff because like you know so one of the records that i'll talk about in a little bit uh is like one of the best deathcore like records that i've heard in a long time but he also sent uh this the last of the cds this is angel maker with uh sanctum so uh yeah this is uh this is the one that i've played i've only played this one through like half of one time and uh, it was just because I ended up leaving the house and didn't know I was going to. So all three of these are pretty good, uh, but the record that I'll talk about in a bit is absolutely my favorite thing he sent. So this is definitely my favorite of the bunch here and this is the first thing that, that River had uh, recommended that I listen to, specifically uh, the song on here called A Bird in the Dusk. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. This is Worm Shepherd with Ritual Hymns. So this is a Massachusetts based band formed back in 2020 and uh, they had their first full length record out in 2020 and this is the second one from 2022. I think to classify this into like a genre you might be able to call this like symphonic blackened deathcore. Uh, which, you know, right off the bat, to, to a lot of people who watch this channel, that might not sound like something that, uh, is even possible to like. But, uh, I, I really, really think that you should give this one a shot. Uh, I, uh, I love, like, this album feels very dramatic. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, really epic, kind of grandiose, sort of, uh, symphonic melodies on here. Uh, behind just this really super duper heavy deathcore. Um, and that kind of thing really separates this from like the deathcore that I sort of know. Like I don't really like any other like symphonic deathcore. Uh, the vocals here are fucking awesome. Like there's a really wide range of vocal styles on here from like these crazy like velociraptor highs to just the gurgliest of lows. So let me show you what this looks like. I really like the style of art used for this um, album cover. And also their logo kind of stands out from like deathcore band logos as well. Um, the back cover is quite simple, but you have all the track listing. Uh, Bird in the Dusk is, like I said, that's probably my favorite song on here. Uh, but yeah, the gatefold is just like one big picture. Very cool. Uh, also, I didn't mention it, uh, Scott Lewis from Carnifex does guest vocals on um, A Bird in the Dusk as well. Uh, which Carnifex, is like, like I said earlier, that's like the deathcore band that I've kept up with the most over the years. Uh, anyway, this comes with a lyric sheet that like folds out into a picture of the guys in the band. And you have all the lyrics on the inside there. Um, I'll also say that the lyrics here are uh, quite a bit better than most of what I'm used to like they're not it's definitely not the same kind of lyrics for uh, things like like Carnifex or the earliest Suicide Silence albums that I'm familiar with um, so I don't have much to reference but uh, this is different than what I would have expected from a deathcore album uh, so this is a double LP this is the Hazel Iris variant of this uh, both of them look the same so I'm only gonna show you one but uh, yeah very cool it's like black with just uh, or clear with black splatter, rather. Uh, yeah, 500 copies. I only have like one other record that looks like this. And I think it's um, Craft Void is like clear with heavy black splatter like this. Very nice. So definitely give this a shot if you've kind of fallen off the deathcore train like I have over the past like 15 years. Because um, this is definitely kind of a, a like a fresh look at what deathcore can be. And uh, because of that, I'm really, really into this record. So if, if it sounds like it might tickle your fancy, give it a whirl. That's Worm Shepherd with Ritual Hymns.
All right, last one for this video. This is the uh, the other record um, that I was sent. And this is another 2022 full length album uh, from another Unique Leader Records band, by the way. This is Crown Magnetar with Alone in Death. So this is a Colorado based band. And I'm pretty sure that the drummer in this band is the same drummer from And Hell Followed With. Uh, so this band released their debut full length album last year. And uh, this is actually an EP. Uh, and this is definitely a lot more straightforward deathcore than like Worm Shepherd is. This one has a, a, a very like clean production sound. You have like those machine gun drums uh, and the kind of like high low vocal trade off. Uh, which, you know, has its upsides because it makes these songs feel more like, they it feel more like songs and less like, uh, I don't know, part of something longer like the Worm Shepherd record does. Uh, so, you know, no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, I will show you, this uh, has this, it's got to be the same artist. Like, it looks like the same style of art. Um, I'm sure it probably says it in here somewhere, but I have not looked. But that's definitely like the same style of art as the uh, the other one that I talked about. There's the back cover there. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite song on this one, but the song Hellsphere is definitely a good one. And God is My Enemy is a, another one that I remember. Um, but yeah, this is a gatefold. You have all the lyrics. The lyrics are kind of in this font here. Uh, which make them a little bit hard to read when they're that small. Uh, so when I was reading along with this, I was actually, actually had looked it up online. I don't know the limitation of this one. I don't think there was a, like a specified limitation, uh, but this is really nice. It's like a uh, black, blue, and red kind of swirl. Uh, the blue is very light. You can see it better on this side. Uh, cause on that side it's kind of just on the outer part, but it is very, very nice looking. But yeah, man, if you're not a fan of like, str uh, like straightforward deathcore, this one's not going to change your mind cause that's exactly what this is. Um, luckily for me, I've got nothing against like heavy fucking breakdowns and high low trade off vocals and you know, the machine gun drums. Like I like all that shit. So just to extend my thanks one more time to River for sending me a box of fucking heaviness. Uh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you always. And uh, I'll be sure that you uh, see this video probably before anybody else. So uh, another banger for sure. That's Crown Magnetar with Alone in Death. gonna wrap this one up. I feel like this one went okay. Uh, just less of a fucking dumpster fire than the last two have been. Though that's of course subject to change once I get this shit into iMovie. But hopefully you guys found something that you uh, will take with you from this video and uh, hopefully you guys look into more of what I've talked about here than what you'll hear in the, the song clips. So thanks for sticking around. Um, I'll be back soon. Later.